I've been working on a lot of songwriting. It's been one of my favorite things to do, even though I talk a lot about jazz and all kinds of academic topics. Um, I just absolutely love the creative process of using all the stuff I like to practice for actual creative work and songwriting. And sometimes it's very singer songwritery. Sometimes it's much more kind of involved and complicated or jazz harmony or whatever. But the little thing I played at the beginning of this video is a piece of a song that I'm working on. And I want to share with you kind of how I arrived at this totally intuitively, totally in just a creative, playful way, but how my knowledge of the harmony and ways to play around with the nuts and bolts of how music works on the guitar um, all of that knowledge helps me be creative and find things I like really fast. But for now, let's talk about this little intro thing. So what I played was this, and I'm going to break down where it comes from. And actually, in my version of the song, it's in a different key, and I use a capo and a partial capo and some weird stuff. But just in a basic kind of normal guitar tuning, um, this is in the key of G. And I want to show you some of the vocabulary that I'm thinking through really clearly. Now, I'm not necessarily starting with something like chord vocabulary, interval vocabulary, and then trying to be creative with it. But by knowing all that stuff, I can just quickly find things that um, sound really nice. And then after the fact, analyze more of it. What I like to do a lot of times is map out kind of where certain um, ideas, concepts, themes come from. For example, if we were working on Blackbird, and just take that intro of it. My homework for myself when I'm working on a song is to say, well, gosh, that sounds lovely. And then there's all this other stuff. I'm like, what's, where is it coming from? And it doesn't even matter if the composer was thinking of this or anything. I'm just like, can I just find more of that? and make it my own if I want to. Well, this is a 10th interval in G. This is G. That's the third of G, open B. 10th interval off of A, which is the two chord of the key. 10th interval off of B minor, which is the two chord of the key. Or you can think of this more realistically, it's G again, G over B. Don't worry about any of those labels though. We're just looking at the shape and it jumps up here in the song. But what if we, Say, so, well, we're in the key of G. Can we just keep going? Well, that's in the song too. What's next in the key? Ooh, that's nice. What's next in the key? Ooh, that's nice. What's next in the key? Wow, what's next in the key? Well, there's that spot. What's next in the key? That, and I'm playing this open G in between each time. Just like every melody that is a tonal melody, which is most music we hear, is like from a scale. And if you analyze where it sits in the scale, you can start to transpose it, have control over music, have control over on the fretboard if you're practicing it. So, okay, now I'm playing with this. Does it sound Blackbird-ish? Yeah. But it's so cool to have control over seeing. This is the five of the key and there's that shape and it's a major shape. You don't need to know all that. I'm on this little side tangent to get into my song to show you how I think of these things. This is the six, this is off the seven, here's the one. And you can extrapolate that to other keys. Here's E major, this is E, the third of E major. This is a drone note, that's the five of the key, off the two of the scale. These are intervals of tenths. I'll go deeper on all this stuff in future videos. Well, here it is in a new place with a different kind of drone note. This is the beginning of La Grima by Francisco, Francisco Tarraga. Very famous uh, classical guitar piece. Tenth, tenth, tenth with the drone. It goes on. Right, so I'm seeing that as very related to the Blackbird thing that's happening. You can start to do it in all kinds of other keys. You know, what if you do it in A? doing these kind of tenths through A. So the language and then and then moving around, being playful, not worrying about mastering it, but doing it out of pure curiosity. And then that can easily, it's such a great way to study music as someone who, if you're interested in being creative with it on your own, which maybe you are, maybe you aren't, that's okay either way. I, I really, really respect musicians that are just like classical musicians. They don't actually compose or improvise 
and they're just so expressive and so masterful at executing and interpreting what someone else composed. There's no value judgment at all on if one should improvise or not improvise or compose or not compose or no theory or not no theory. It's all a playground for us to choose what we fancy what we want to play with. And for me, I really fancy this kind of stuff and love to play with this kind of stuff. So here's what I'm playing with here. I'm in the key of G actually, which is why I thought of Blackbird. And here's the scale of G root seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, along the fifth string. And then I'm seeing thirds, seeing, hearing, mapping out thirds from that. So off the one major third, off the seven minor third, off the six minor third, off the five major third, off the four major third. I want to know the structure of music in this way. This is a very theoretical understanding of music, but in a hands-on way on the guitar. That's how I study, right? I'm not good at this abstractly or with sheet music necessarily. It's like, it's all about using it on the instrument for me. And then I'm, it's funny, it, it makes it seem like I borrowed this from Blackbird, but I didn't. It just happens to be in G. It happens to use this G drone and I'm playing thirds through the key and Blackbird is playing thirds, but with an octave in between, which is tenths. So uh, that's probably why it reminded me of that, but it's not like I took Blackbird and tried to make something. But here's effectively what I'm doing. If you map those out and then let's be playful with it, major third off the root of G, you can go up to two, and I'm plucking now the interval and then the open G. It's getting high on the fretboard there, so go off the two. Two, four, two, four. Minor third off the two of the scale. Major third off the one of the scale. Minor third off the seven of the scale. And etc. And playing the, the open G in between. Pretty nice, right? You could do this in all kinds of ways. You could just do it like this. Right? You could play an open D in between the chord changes if they're hard to change or if you're squeaking. Because D is the fifth note of the scale of G. So it works really nicely. Just playing an open D in between. This already, this doesn't even sound like the thing that I ended up with yet, a little bit. But notice how playful that is. Like it just to, to feel like, yeah, I'm using music. I'm using nature, the nature of music, just these structures that exist and getting to know them better, improvising with them, composing with them. With them. Well, then I actually am doing this finger style technique where I am playing the two open strings, open B and open G, and moving down the thirds that we mapped out this way. So now I have this finger style pattern, da, 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 ba, ba, da, da. P, I, and then these two. P being thumb, I being index. It's a, a finger style pattern you could work on. And then uh, applying that. Notice how it's coming together into this thing, at least for me, the thing that I ended up doing. Now comes the fun part. Well, it's all fun. I added some chromaticism, and this is this is something I especially wanted to share with you. Um, chromaticism can be, go anywhere. You can, let's say we're taking this shape here, and we know that we're going down to this shape here. Okay, well you can just add half steps between them. So, let's do it back with the Crunchy for a second, but very cool because then it, it lands on something so inside after that. You don't have to know the theory of it or anything. You could just do that anytime. Well, here's off the five, major third off the five, major third off the four. Whoa, maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it, but there is kind of a eerie, like sophistication sound to it. 
And there is theory behind it. There's theory behind everything. Theory is after the fact. Theory is after music was made to try to describe something, right? So you could call this like uh, tritone substitution or, you know, approaching by a half step above with a major chord or whatever. It doesn't matter right now. Right now, it's like, can we add spiciness to it in between things? And if we want to get more precise about our decision and not just only randomly explore, if you're looking to add chromaticism and borrow a note from somewhere chromatic, we're going to do something called modal borrowing, where we're going to borrow a note from G minor. Okay, so you could get from the ground up and then start mapping out G minor. Okay, the four of G minor, flat three of G minor, two, five, three, four, five, flat six. It might remind you, I better know structure of my minor scale. Four, five, flat six, flat seven, one, two, flat three, da, da. This is G minor. Well, if in doubt, something to play with, something I want you to keep in mind, is that if you're in a major key and you want to borrow one of these minor notes, add chromaticism, the most common note to, to use to add maybe just one flavor of chromaticism, if you're going to add one in a major key, is the flat six. Borrowing the flat six from what's called the parallel major. So borrowing flat six, playing flat six in G major is borrowing that for a second from the parallel minor. And again, that's all theory, right? Just one, seven, six, five, six, flat six. That's the note. Just find it, add it in. Uh, that is the most common, at least for what I hear, flavor of chromaticism that is often added in a piece of music that is mostly major and just does a little something, just adds a little something. So here's what I did. Okay, I also changed the rhythm so it's Okay, but very cool. This is off the 6 of G 6 of G flat 6 of G whoa And all this stuff to eventually know about is really helpful. I know that the flat 6 chord in a minor key is major This is the one chord of a minor key this is the two chord of a minor key and it's diminished. This is the three chord of a minor key. It's flat three majors. This is the four chord of a minor key and it is minor. I did a songwriting video where we mapped out all this. I think it was in the key of G2, in G minor. I'll link to that in the description. A songwriting from the ground up, kind of big writing a progression. Five chord in G is D minor, or you can make it major or dominant seven. The flat six chord is major. So right here, off the flat six is a major third interval. I'm still just playing these open things above and letting it be as crunchy as it is. Totally fine. There's a major, there's a B natural there. Cool. I don't even care what it is. I could try to say, oh, here's how I'd explain that, but I'm just, just digging it, just playing it. So, off the six, flat six, five, four. Here's off the three, four, three with the flat six again. Okay, this is flat six. This is five of G, open D, six of G, flat six of G. So I used it in two places, and definitely when I wrote it, I wasn't thinking, I'm going to add the flat six. I just added the chromaticism that felt good to me, and then later I was like, oh, no way, both those spots happen to be the flat six, and I'm just doing what feels good. That's the thing, that's the interlude. It's kind of the chorus of the song. I'm working with a producer who's helping me kind of figure out maybe more of a produce arrangement of it, but it lends itself really nicely to kind of a built-in harmony that maybe vocals could be on. And then the verses of the song are just super simple. It's just this. G chord, finger picking to C major seven, back and forth. And that's the whole song. There's verses here and then this interlude thing. That's all I wanted to do for this video. I wanted to share through kind of some steps, breaking down this little simple-ish thing that I wrote that kind of has its own flavor to it, has these drone notes going, and just say, here's some theory that's going on. Here's some fretboard kind of awareness that's going on. Whether I'm thinking of that 
when I'm composing or not totally doesn't matter. I'm looking for the thing in creativity that actually just feels right, feels good, feels honest, feels genuine, feels authentic, feels like me, feels, gives me the goosebumps, whatever. Trying to just play, just play um, and have fun like a kid would drawing a picture, right? And all the theory knowledge helps me get to something faster or Maybe it just helps me kind of know what it is after the fact, like it's basically what happened here. And then fun to talk about, fun to think about, fun to extrapolate, fun to use. Say, oh, well that happened there. Maybe that would help us do something in this bridge that is a little bit related. So it's thematically similar or not. You don't have to think that way. You could do it any way you want, but I'm enjoying leaning a little more into my songwriting um, tendencies and therefore sharing a little bit of it um, in my lessons as I, uh, go through continuing to teach and obviously still doing a lot of jazz videos and finger style stuff and kind of all over the map. I'm just trying to be me and trying to share what works for me, some of my own practicing journey with you as I go. So hopefully you're finding it beneficial. Um, if you want a chord chart and don't have my chord chart yet, that's called Chords with Color. It has the chords through the keys that we talked about that is important. Knowing that the one chord is major, two chord is minor, three chord is minor. It's a really cool, very, very unique chord chart that shows chords through keys with open string chords in five different keys and all the minor key versions. So really that's 10 different keys. And the main feature of the chord chart is that it shows a bunch of alternative options for all of those chords that add color to them, extensions, uh, beautiful chord shapes. I'm certain some of them you've never played, but are actually really easy to play that add um, a bunch of um, extra information, nines, sus chords, um, 11s, you know, things that just make them very lush, maybe more advanced sounding and really fun to practice through. So I put a lot of effort into that and people who get it say that they love it. So if you don't have it yet and you're interested, please get it. It's totally free. Chords with Color is the name of the chord chart. There's a link to it in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color and get it there. I post a new lesson video every week and hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.